Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Max Power in the 5-Minute Pool on ICC. Let's keep the Scandinavian going. By the time you guys watch this, I will be at a tournament. And as I've said, I tend to play uh, openings that I might play in tournaments a little bit closer to the actual tournament date, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, Knight f3, so white is refusing to put the pawn on d4. Bishop g4 would be a typical mistake right now, so let's play bishop f5 and then go e6. We'll see how Mr. Max Power responds. Is that the Danish flag? Denmark, yes. Okay, e6. So white castle short. And I'll play c6, just stopping me d5 business. These positions are so common in the Scandinavian. They're just absolutely standard. h3, so this rules out a uh, bishop g4 move. Let's just play bishop e7. I could put the bishop on d6, but... I think there's a lot of circumstances where it's actually just fine to put the bishop on e7. White goes after the bishop pair. I thought they might do this when they played h3. I'm not opposed to this scenario. As usual in the Scandinavian, black has arranged a lot of pawns on light squares, so the fact that I've given up the light square bishop isn't too big of a deal. That said, maybe after h3 I could have played um, h6 myself if I really wanted to try to retain the bishop pair. So let's see how white uses their bishop pair advantage. They played knight e4 and traded, so this frees up c3, which they play now. I could play c5 if I wanted, looking to strike back in the center. Knight f6 would be normal. a5 would be normal. If a5, they'll play a4, though. Kind of tempted to play c5. If c5, bishop e3, knight f6 could prove awkward. So let's do that. Let's go c5 and try to break free. This is a pawn advance that black often strives to play eventually, so let's do it now and see what happens. i got to look out for sacrifices on e6. It has crossed my mind that white might play like rook takes e6 even. But after pawn takes, bishop takes check, king h7. I'm not getting mated on the h-file. Queen h5 would not be possible because my pawn covers that square. And same thing with bishop takes e6. I just want to make sure that white can't do that. So they retreat. Makes sense. So if I take here, are they going to take with the queen? Is that what they're arguing? Nonetheless, I will take. If queen takes, I have bishop c5. Okay, so they voluntarily accept the isolated pawn. So now I'd like to play to blockade that, I think. Let's see what I can do here. Knight b6 attacking the bishop. And then maybe bishop b4 thereafter. That appeals to me. Yeah, let's go knight b6. Just attack that bishop, and I can always put the, the knight on d5. Bishop b4. Yeah, let's try bishop b4. So trying to make this rook uncomfortable. And if bishop d2, I can take on d4. Okay, so at least I enticed the rook to a bad square. Now let's go here. I expect a3. I think they're going to want to kick my bishop away. And then I could put it on d6 or maybe back to e7. Maybe e7 would be good so that I can play bishop f6 and hammer that d-pawn from a different angle. I bet they'll put their bishop on e3. But should they do that, I can play moves like bishop g5 or knight d5 or knight c4. If knight c4, probably queen e2, which attacks the knight and also guards b2. Knight d5, on the other hand, looks pretty good. Maybe bishop f6 to start, though. Yeah, let's do that and take an eye on that d4 pawn. That also ties their queen down a little bit. Yeah, like they couldn't play queen e2 right there. Knight d5, maybe. So putting the knight on a blockading square. I think now that the queen's on d3, it's less likely that I'd be able to play knight c4, so this is fine, I think. Queen b6, they can take d5. Although I should be a little bit better in that resulting position. But I'm going to try to milk the uh, the knight on d5 and keep it defended by my queen for the time being. Is white going to go for swaps? Because now rook c1, I don't think that's so desirable for them. Take, take. Queen b6 hits the bishop. And also that pawn on d4. Uh, they can just play bishop e3, though. Hmm. What about take c1, bishop takes knight f4, bishop takes f4, queen takes f4. 
d5, bishop d4, maybe. I feel like that should be something, but maybe not. Hmm. Really feels like I should win material here, but I'm not sure. Rook takes c1, bishop takes c1, knight f4, bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, d5. I could just take d5 and then take on like b2. I think I'm going to go for that line. Check. I'm pretty sure they're going to want to take. And then we have an opposite color bishop position where they're going to want to get rid of their d-pawn, but the weakness of f2 is what intrigued me about this line, and hence why I'm going for it. I feel like I can organize pressure against that f2 pawn. Queen e4. Ah, they can just do that move. Okay, so that hits my knight. I probably should play g5 now. Hmm... They can take b7, I take d4 in that case. All right, let's try it. So we'll support the knight. Yeah, this isn't exactly what I wanted, though. Now if they take on f4, I guess I could take either way, pawn or queen. Pawn would be more dynamic, keeping the queens on the board, because... If we get to a single bishop endgame with opposite colors, it's almost certainly going to be drawn. Let's see how they react to g5, though. They could maybe play g3. Now they're going to undermine instead. Okay, what if I just take here, though? Because after queen takes, bishop takes, if they take g5, I have knight e2 and I pick up the bishop at the end. So that might have been a miscalculation by white. I could even go knight e2 check right now. I think that's check. even better, actually. Yeah, so let's do this and attack the bishop. So if they take g5, I take b3. So I'm winning two pawns, because I'm going to take h4 next move. Got to move the bishop. All right, so let's see what we can do with this with limited time. So now I might actually contemplate going into a opposite color bishop ending. Uh, the time is going to be a big factor, though. Okay, let's go here. So if ever this bishop moves, maybe bishop b2. Let's play b6, just get a pawn off a light square. Let's go here. I'm anticipating a trade. And after b5, I was thinking this move. Then let's go e5. So I'm going to start trying to activate my 4 versus 2 majority. f6, let's play. Bishop e3. Oh, I'm losing that pawn. Whoops. Didn't realize that would be the case. Okay, still got to bring up my pieces. If bishop f2, I have bishop d4. So I'm going to try to go and win this b5 pawn. Let's play bishop e1. This could prove tricky, though, trying to win this one. I'm not going to repeat. Wow, they're actually not going to repeat. I wasn't going to repeat anyways, but... <laughs> um, okay, let's take... Let's come here and knight e3 check is a threat. Time warning, check. Let's go here. And then I'm going to go e3. Now I think I'm forcing the trade of the bishops. Check. Yeah, this is going to force the trade. And now I think they're losing because of this. Check. Let's just stop their king from coming in. We're going to go after this pawn. Check. Check. Uh, check, check there. Check. And we've got mate in a couple moves. Check. Check mate. Okay, so we win that ending. I would have preferred to win that ending without dropping the h-pawn. I think that was kind of sloppy by me. When I played f6 right here after bishop g5, maybe I can't defend it already, but I forgot that white was attacking that pawn. I thought they were trying to go bishop d8 to attack. 
b6 and just kind of instinctively played f6. All right, so let's go back and have a look at this one. So this time white brought their bishop out and then followed it with their knight, but didn't put the pawn on d4. So a common mistake here would be bishop g4, allowing bishop takes f7 check. check. King takes f7 check. and knight e5, forking the king and the bishop and white wins a pawn and has a winning position. So that's why I put the bishop on f5. I'm not really afraid of lines where white castles kingside and doesn't play like super actively in the opening like this. I think these are by and large just fine for black. So right here after h3, it did cross my mind that white might be preparing knight h4. So I think I could play h6. It's just that I played these positions so often where white gets the bishop pair and I'm not really scared of them, even though the bishop pair is traditionally an advantage. Uh, so that's why I didn't bother to play h6, but let's just see what the engine thinks. Yeah, the engine likes that move. So that if ever this, we have a nice little cubby cubby hole retreat for the bishop on h7. Technically, that's probably the stronger move. So I just did bishop e7. They attack the bishop. We got a trade. Yeah, and white wants to move this knight from c3. So knight e4 is probably a good decision because what often happens in the Scandinavian is that white c pawn is blocked by their own knight. And sometimes that bishop on c4, as you see. So they prefer to have that pawn on c3 where it helps to defend e4 or on c4 where maybe they can try to go d5 eventually. So they need to clear that congestion in order to do that. So knight e4, I just traded. I think white has a small edge here, but again, it's it's within manageable boundaries for black. I'm not sure rookie one was the best decision. That kind of justified my uh, choice of c5 on the previous move because white should try to avoid a, a structural defect like an isolated pawn that they ended up having in the game. So maybe just take, maybe they were reluctant to do that because of this move, which is probably what I would have played, but there is rook d4 attacking my queen and avoiding a trade. What if I play bishop takes c5? That's also possible. Bishop b3 or bishop f4, just developing. Knight f6 maybe, rook e1. Yeah, if white can do a continuation like this, this would be preferable because they don't have a pawn weakness in the center. So rook e1 does look weak to me. So I took, and here again, they could try to avoid the structural defect with queen takes. I thought they might do that. And then I was thinking knight b6 to attack their queen and also attack the bishop and play an ending like this, which even here the engine thinks is a tiny bit better for white. That's entirely due to the bishop pair. That's what that evaluation reflects. Instead, they took with a pawn, and now I can look forward to blockading that pawn. So I played bishop b4. I wasn't exactly sure how this would turn out, but it seemed like an annoyance to me. If I were white, I wouldn't necessarily want to see bishop b4, because the point is, if bishop d2, I can take this pawn. White has blocked the path of their queen to d4. So I was just trying to pester them and see where that rook goes. Rook f1 I didn't like for them. I thought maybe bringing the rook up the file to e2 or e4 was better. So rook f1, I played rook c8, and maybe I'm getting an edge myself now. Put the bishop on f6, and then knight d5 blockading, queen d6. So this seemed like a poor decision to me Check. to offer a trade, but then again, I was looking at some tactics here, and nothing seemed crushing. So let me, let me back this up for a second. Rook c1, yeah, Check. trading is consistent. Because I have this knight f4 idea, and I know that d4 is weak, and if I move the knight, my queen and my bishop will be attacking that pawn. So hence, knight f4 is a natural move to look at. The engine says play knight e7 instead. That crossed my mind, but I thought white would play like bishop e3 and then maybe d5 next move, especially if I played this to try to bring about pressure again here. I think d5 is a good way to liquidate. Maybe I win b2, but a7 is also hanging, I have to bear in mind. So I went with the more straightforward knight f4, but I underestimated white just not taking the knight. <laughs> so um, if they had taken, I was hoping that my attack on this pawn plus the potential for bishop d4 and the attack on the f2 pawn would give me something, but maybe it's nothing. Like say I do this now. Am I really getting anything? If they take here, yeah, Check. this is a bad decision. That looks like mate because I can play bishop Check. d5. And then... Check. Yeah, they're going to get checkmated Checkmate. here. 
So on bishop d4 after d5, they would have to play like queen e2, something like that, to defend the f2 pawn. And if I take, they take. And now it's looking sort of equal. I mean, I gotta bear in mind that my king is not completely safe either. There's always a possibility of a check on e8. And I have some weak pawns too. So I don't think I have any right to be better at this point. Knight f4 was so tempting though. But maybe, maybe there's some way to keep some modest check. edge here. Check, king h2, now take d5. If bishop takes, grab on b2. And black has banked a pawn simultaneously on defending b7. I have to make sure white doesn't go and attack f7. That's often how you judge these opposite color bishop middle games, by the way, or near endings, is pressure on f2 or f7. It's common that there will be um, attacks on those squares because they're, they're hard to defend if you don't possess the same color bishop as one of those pawns. So maybe I could squeeze something out of this. It's probably still a draw, but... Instead, white played queen e4, and I went g5. So I was ready, if they took here, to uh, win this pawn. Oh yeah, and there's check. also this check, isn't there? Picking up that bishop. Hmm. So what did white do? They played h4, and now I took here. Yeah, h4 was probably a bad move by white. That didn't have the desired effect, did it? So what should they have done? Bishop e3, nice and solid. Just defend the d-pawn. And then I can do this because I have this tactic involving uh, knight e2. Like if white does this, I can actually take here. Check. And this endgame might be winning for black after I pick up the queen, pawn up. But it's not completely clear. Here they can do this. Still black has a little something, but that, that's not much of an edge. Maybe also they should just take on f4 and agree to play an opposite color bishop ending. Because again, there's there's always such a high likelihood of a draw if this happens. Wasn't sure whether I should take with the queen or the pawn in this case. I think I probably would have taken with the pawn to keep more tension. But then d5, try to liquidate. Yeah. Take. Bishop takes. I can win b2, but again, I got to worry about stuff like queen e8. Or this Check. move is good as well. Because uh, white Check. can come here and fork the king and the bishop. So it seems that there was much better for white at this stage, but they spent almost 40 seconds and then played h4, and all of a sudden, this happens, check. and I get knight e2 check-in, and then take here, and white doesn't have time to pick up the g-pawn because I'm taking here. Like, if they take with the pawn, I take here, they take my bishop, and I take c1, absolute win for black, up a piece. So bishop c4, and I took here. So now I've safely banked two pawns. I still have to be wary of transitions to potentially drawn endings. If white decides to trade their dark score bishop for my knight, we'd have opposite color bishops. And even up two pawns, like sometimes those endings are drawn. Uh, but what was foremost in my mind was just making sure I didn't flag while still giving my, myself a chance to play for a win. I think I did a decent job of that. Getting the king involved was key. E5. Hmm, maybe this isn't so bad, giving up this pawn, because this does buy me some time. Like, you notice that I get to bring my king up pretty aggressively. Maybe I don't even need g5. Maybe just king f7 directly. Maybe even e4. It's not bad. Gaining more space, although that might allow bishop g3 eventually to hit my knight. So it might be helpful to keep a dark square pawn barricade so that this piece doesn't become active again. So now I just wanted to rush my king up and try to win the b5 pawn. So do something like this and then take on b5. A trade would be losing for white. After this, my king is going to uh, march inexorably to c5 and then take on b5. So they absolutely can't trade the bishops. And here again, I'm trying to entice a trade. So here's where I have to worry about uh, blockades. Because if white is allowed to play bishop takes d6, then I cannot win. My extra pawn would be pretty meaningless because it's all blockaded up. Actually, this is a pawn structure similar to one I had against Greg Shahadi in one of our games from our matches. It was an opposite color bishop position, and I was up one pawn with the dark square bishop as black versus his light square bishop, but he held easily. It was a blockade. So I don't want to allow bishop takes d6. To win, though, i got to get my pawns going. That's pretty clear. So he actually avoided playing bishop c3. I wasn't going to take a draw anyways, but he avoided doing that. And here I got to play f5. 
followed by e4 very soon. Maybe white should have spent a little more time right around here figuring out a defense, because there might be one. Check. Although, it's probably pretty specific. e3, all these moves look good. Yeah, it looks like I played the ending well. Hmm. So where did white mess up here? g4 seemed kind of strange. I'm not sure they should have done that. That created a target on g4. I know they're trying to trade down and break up my pawns, but... Yeah, maybe, maybe they should be patient. I don't think g4 is a good move. It's possible this is winning for Check. black. I'm up one pawn. I have greater activity. My king is centralized. I got a pass to e-pawn. It's possible it's a win. So here, apparently, bishop d3 was the only chance. Okay, attacking the knight. So that after take and take here... White has some hope of creating a fortress once again. Hmm. What if I just come here? King g2. Okay, even this is winning for black. Yeah, up two pawns. With much better king position as well. Hmm. Yeah, it might be beyond reach now. After e3. So they did this, bishop d4. And being able to trade the dark square bishops is huge. Then I avoid any uh, ghost of a opposite color bishop draw, and I think my e-pawn is just unstoppable. So I've taken away all the all those safe flight squares from their bishop. There's no way they can go. I have all those circled squares covered. And note that if they try to go after my knight instead, I can just do this and then here, and they can't stop the pawn. Check. So white did this, but I just brought my king in. They're forced to do this trade. And now it's just a matter of executing Check. the win in a totally winning position. I decided not to go after the b5 pawn because I didn't want white's king to become active. So that's why I went this way. I was trying to contain their king and make it easier for me to convert this with you check. Know, 15, 10 seconds check. left. Check, 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 mate. All right, so I think you saw a lot of uh, Scandinavian aspects in this one, like fighting without the pair of bishops. And... Admittedly, I probably should have played h6. I think if I could go back in time and do this, I probably would have played h6. Objectively, that's the stronger move after white has played h3. Um, I think on for white's part, they, they really handed me an opportunity when they just accepted that isolated pawn. And it always seems like they're, they're the ones fighting for equality after that. So, hope you guys enjoyed this game, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.